on the stage for Women's Day celebration. Our Chief Guest, the first female Indian Police Service Officer, the recipient of several prestigious awards, winner of several tennis championships, author of several books, Indian social reformer, is now the active leader in governance of Puducherry. It's our pride, it's our pride of the day actually, and absolute excitement to have the Honorable Chief Guest amidst us for our Women's Day celebrations here today. Phd in IIT Delhi. 
village la bande padichi mel pad padichi and she got a phd from the famous iit delhi idoda mattum illa ma'am madam kuda sonnanga she has got a she is very good fond of play tennis tennis la she got a international la bande she got two prizes a national champion and got eligibility to play in the wimbledon She is the only person who has entered the Wimbledon and played there. This way, she sets an example to all of us here. Not only education is important, but equally important is also the physical and mental stamina. Like, if you are not able to do it, you are not able to do it. If you are not able to do it, you can achieve anything. What are you wanting? Definitely, she is a living example for all of us. I am sure. Our motto: Education, discipline, exaltation. Our motto. As I told you, education, discipline, exaltation is our motto of our institution. And I am sure she is the one person who is there. I am neither black nor white, but she is the she is the one person to struggle to get education. She is the person to having no compromise in your discipline. And you can also one day she all become entire. can convert the entire society towards the exaltation ungalku dermiyum neediyum palippum endha kandipaga neengal mele pogam mudiyum endra nammudaiya kurikol adai naam inge seindu kondirukkai paathrom agara we are one today lot more deserving young covered and enlightened great lady citizens like our madam and see that you are going to be a bright follower such personalities generate confidence in us i am sure this message in her their life it's a aim great missions fight and struggle with pride words hard and given opportunity work hard and give very good opportunity never give stop not till you goal is reached in the or anje vaathiy manasa vechinaaga kandipaaga you all going to be a very good citizens and you are going to be a proud and follower of our madam and take this uh, our opportunity to thank our madam who has been kind enough to accept our Invitation readily without seeing her without her son. Only our AP or the PSN have done it. And she has readily accepted. And punctuality is a person who is there. Example like that. Now we want to put the money in for now. We want to put the money in for now. That shows how much she is interested in. போதும் <laughs> நிறைய வேண்டியதில்ல ஒரே அதை விட ஒரு புரிய பாக்குறது ஆகிய அவங்க ஒரு சொல்ற பேச்சு நீங்க நோட் பண்ணி வெச்சிருங்க डेफिनेटली ஐ அம் ஷூர் தட் ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ will be able to follow and you going to become a very good citizen of our country thank you very much got university card rank next hey mamu jalali from bsc k Dr. Rajendran, Chairman of the Group of Institutions, Krishna Sami. Dr. Vijay Kumar, the Secretary of the Krishna Sami Trust. Dr. K. N. Gunan Gunasundaray, our Trustee. Nirmala, Principal of your College. Lakshmi, a very bright woman, a role model for all of you. Members of the faculty. and my dear children young girls budding women happy to be here today and this is probably my first visit to a college in kadalore i am here i want to thank the trust for inviting me because i would be happy to have come even earlier if you had invited me <laughs> because i like going to educational institutions and seeing so many young bright girls i did not know that you were such a big college in this part of the region i congratulate all the prize winners and the medalists 
for having earned their certificate. With so many women in this area, how long has this institution been? You would should have been a, already a revolution. If you're 13 years old in a women's college of such a big number, this whole area should have been a transformed area with so many women. It's it's transformative number. And for me, every woman stands for transformation. Every woman is not alone by herself. She's a family. Every woman is a family because she influences everybody around her. As a teacher, she impacts the class. As an administrator, she impacts the office. As a head of the family, she impacts the family. As a mother, as a daughter, as a daughter-in-law, as a sister, as a citizen, as a friend, she influences so much. You should have been a good Lord, could have been a transformative, known for brightest women. So what have you been doing last 12 years? It's transformative. We are still talking about water sanitation. We talk and still talk about water uh, literacy for women. We're still talking about many issues of sanitation. Where are the women? Where is the leadership? How many women of you are village panchayats members? Heads of panchayats. How many of you are members of a panchayat? You have panchayats? You have panchayats? Yes. Where are you? Where are the women in panchayats? Do you mean to say it's not meant for graduate and master's girls? Or is it meant only for senior citizen who's got no other work and then become a member of the grand panchayat? What about educated women becoming members of the panchayat? Why not? It's truly transformative. Please understand, India's heart lies in villages. Where are the educated women in the panchayats? And when 33% reservation is for women, the reason is because we are not oriented towards village. You are coming from villages, but you're moving away from the villages. Am I right? You are coming from villages, but you're not part of the development of the same village. You are impacted by the inadequacies of the village, but you're not inspired and angry about changing your own village. Am I right? If you have done 12 years, I'm not talking about it. It's an example. I'm not finding fault. I'm challenging you. I am challenging you. Understand that. I am challenging you to like something which is a need of your heart. It is transformative village. It is transformative neighborhood. Where are you? Where are the women? Where are the young educated women becoming rural leaders? Today, till last year, Chennai, Tamil Nadu as a whole suffered from water shortage. How can water shortage happen if villages take care of themselves? Water harvesting happens, sanitation happens, and skills development happens, cottage industry happens, health care happens. Where is the rural leadership? Why is this not in the hands of graduate women? You might just say, but that doesn't give me employment. But you can do it plus employment. Now, if you become a member of the panchayat, you can also continue your vocation. But you might just say, but there is no job there. I have to go out somewhere else to learn, earn. But there are other women who've got time. They're married, they're graduates, they're married, they're at home and doing no work outside the home. They could be members of the panchayat. Because we don't train women. We don't educate the women. We don't give internships to the women. We are actually urbanizing our villages by doing this. We are actually drawing you out of your grassroots and actually making you migrants. We are making women migrants. We are making our women migrants. Whereas they could be actually the developers of the rural areas. And in rural areas there is agriculture, there is land, there is everything in the village. This 
woman Lakshmi who's sitting next to me, I've seen her. In a few acres of land, they are millionaires. They're crorepadis. Because they use every bit of the land for the right kind of agriculture. We don't, we don't understand. We want to run away from agriculture. But it doesn't matter. Even if you are in computers, etc. It's a great, job, great service. It's an urban job. Where is rural development? Why is a woman not involved also in rural development? I'm asking you. Because we are, we are in a village, but we are running away from a village. We don't want to work in a village. We want to serve in a village. We want to don't develop in a village. And we are handing over the rural leadership to men and women who, are, who probably, probably are not as, uh, the world is not as wide as yours. Today, every village needs to be a smart village. We are talking about smart cities. What about smart village? And smart village is, which has, and village has space. Urban areas have no more space. Village air, air is still clean. Urban air is polluted already. In village, you can bike around in a small place. In urban areas, you have to find a bus or a train or a car to go long distances. The reason is that during our student times, we do or not do internships to serve the village. We do not make community service as a part of our education. We do not make community giving as a part of education. You may be, you may be entrepreneur, you join government services, but you have to learn to serve the community at the grassroots level as a student, man or a woman. I know you're working on women's celebrations, but as I said, women, educated women in such large numbers. And if you've been as a trust for 13 years, where are those women? Why are they not leading the change in the areas? Why? Why are they not change agents? If India is to be different, every woman has to be a change agent. Why? Because every woman is a society by herself. Every woman is a society. She creates a family because she is naturally family oriented. She is natural. So unless we include rural orientation, agriculture, horticulture, water, sanitation, these basics in our basic education, graduate, nothing, you have to go you are staying, some of you are already staying in the villages. You have to have a village project of your own. A village project of your own village. As the woman who is transforming, the woman leadership. We need to create this woman leadership in every village. How many of you belong to villages? And you, uh, raise your hands. How many of you are coming from villages? Or are you all coming from the town? Raise your hands, those who are coming from the villages. Raise your hands properly. Look at transformation. Thank you. How many of you in the village is involved in water sanitation? How many of you in the village is, uh, is committed and worked on tree plantation? How many of you in the village is working on planting, working with the house or, and even cleanliness? How many of you village girls have adopted any pond and cleaned it up? as Shramdhan. You have to be the change agent. It's not the graduate, it's not a question. You need a degree, which you are getting. It's a very good degree you're getting. It makes you employable in urban areas, but you are migrating away. You are migrants then. You need not be a migrant. You can continue to serve your village while being working elsewhere. Am I right? Or no? You can continue to lead your own village while working anywhere else. Am I right or wrong? Yes. And that will happen only when you're told to love your village. How many of you in your own village school go and teach a class, take a class, and teach the youngsters out of love for doing, or a Saturday or a Sunday? How many of you go back to play with the girls, children? You need to be a village child, village girl, while being highly qualified and educated, technically qualified, and go anywhere. 
Pas tu vas dire une chose. The you get the being you can you if you're not being able to be a serpent you can be a punch doesn't matter. But rural development rural development schemes you can be part of. Your ponds can have fisheries, and you can learn learn the pattern of greenery. Today there's a movement on Swachh Bharat, Hara Bharat. पानी वाला जल जल शक्ति हम यू यू इन्वॉल्व इन एनी वन ऑफ द स्कीम्स यू आर अवे फ्रॉम योर ग्रास रूट्स सो इफ यू हैव टू सेलिब्रेट वुमेनहुड वी नीड टू बी द चेंज एजेंट्स ऑफ आर ओन सोसाइटी एंड वी कैन बिगिन फ्रॉम वेर एवर यू आर लिविंग वेर एवर यू आर स्टेइंग यू कैन क्रिएट वुमेन ग्रुप वुमेन ग्रुप्स ऑल स्टूडेंट्स फ्रेंड्स ऑफ योर ओन bring the other girls if the boys want to join you very good if they don't want to join you doesn't matter you can form girl youth clubs in each village of yours form girl leadership groups and from girl leadership groups change they adopt a pond learn agriculture work with your men it's you is using your every education is three age it's a head it's a heart and it's a hands how many work with your hands How many of you we work with the hands? We think make using a broom on the on the public road is beneath us. It is not. It is service to the nation. You didn't expect this from me today. <laughs> Even I didn't. Let me tell you, I didn't come to tell you this. I have not come to tell you this till a moment ago. I had something else in my head. But seeing you, I start to ask and wonder. When you have so much strength, look at the kind of energy. You can lead the transformation in every village. You can, and I'm sure some of you have some small pieces of land of your father, the grandfather, when you're in, or your common land. Go see Lakshmi's farm. Go and see Lakshmi's farm land. Go and see it. How in a small place they are growing seeds, saplings, and creating patents for themselves. And she's a young lady. Because we do not value land agriculture anymore. We think land is only for construction of a house. We do not think land is also to give us our food, our energy, our nutrition, and that soil needs to be protected also. i urge the trust please sensitize them towards nature towards environment that sensitization towards nature alone will make you a better human being when you if you want to be a better human being you must associate and integrate yourself with the nature and its laws of nature no book can teach you this no book only book will not it's only when you do it and you all do it at home even construction of your own toilets help go and construct others food you become learn plumbing learn plumbing learn any skill learn any rural skill go anywhere but do not become a migrant from your own village adopt your own village own your own village become girl leadership groups and work on your school construct it with your own hands raise a little bit money earn learn a craft learn the folk song of your own village enjoy your real enjoyment is your village not the town have you understood yes ma'am would you try it yes ma'am yeah. be the one and look at the number of educated girls this kadulod this part of the country is producing and graduates and masters and mphil in computers and mbas all for urban jobs and there's some of you may get high salary some may of good low salary you will be waiting for a job where the village gives you self employment if you create it by your hands you can create wealth even in your own village today even 
rooftops are becoming uh, gardens of wealth. So I'm, uh, uh, you learn what you're doing, but all I'm saying is, I'm not saying you do whatever you're doing is in any way less important. Brilliant. I want to congratulate the college for giving the girls all the kind of qualifications you're giving. It's an excellent thing, but I want you to be remaining grounded. I want you to remain sensitive to where are you coming from and value what you have. Value. Add value. First, value what you have, then add value to it. And make it, make it outstanding, make it, make it uh, an example for everything. It take help. You must be having horticulture, agriculture departments, right? You have having. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh my God, no wonder. <laughs> no. But every child needs to be linked with the environment. And agriculture is part of the environment. I'm only trying to orientate. You see, it's not just small classes. Okay, anyway, I've told you whether you like it or you don't. You may follow it or you may not. But if you want to be part of the change in India, and I want you to be self-employed, and you want to be women leaders, and you want to be on your own, and you want to be remaining grounded and rooted, and you want to be happy in what you have, you cannot run away from your own village. You must continue to own it. Go back to its school, go back to its own places of entertainment, hobbies. But the, the community, what do you call chopals? We call chopals where we all assemble. We call chopal in India. Hindi. What do you call it? Where the community comes together. What is it called? Village square. Village square. Village square. Village square. Village temple. Yes, temples are a great place of coming together. In in uh, I've seen the maximum women. How many of you are trustees of any village uh, temple? Most of you women go to the temple, but we don't never become trustees. We don't want to run any such organization because you see, you and I are in a hurry to find a job, and I understand that there is a need for it. You have to add whatever I've said to your lives, if you can. Okay? All right, my second thing for you now is, do you, do you understand what will make you better or different from the men? What are the men's strengths and what are the women's weaknesses? The man's strength is money. He has the money. He has the property. He has the inheritance. And he gets it by birth, because parents gift it to him. Parents, a boy is considered a natural inheritor of the house of the parents, or the land of the parents. Girl is not. Why? Because the girl is again a migrant. Because she has to go, she has, she leaves her parents' home to make another home. Whereas the father, boy is not expected to go. On the contrary, he's expected to stay, to look after the aging parents. Whereas a girl is expected to go and look after another's aging parents, the man's aging parents, right? Big difference is here, is money. Is migrant and money. Well, going to your another home is your choice. But remember, you are an equal property, right, property owners with your parents. Under the new law or the old now Hindu law, men, girls, and boys are equal inheritors of the parents' property. You have an equal share. If the parents deny you, you have an equal share. You may decide to give it back to your brother, but you have an equal share. But main thing is money. But property alone is not money. Money will come by earning. Many of you study but stop earning because you become mothers very soon. When you become mothers very soon, now you want to focus on the child. And then child becomes the, your priority and you stop earning, so you are dependent. The difference between your, the man and the woman is, man continues to earn money. Woman earns or not earns. 
She earns and not earns. And therefore, she's dependent. So you want to be strong in your life or succeed, continue. The big difference between men and women is money. And what, money, what does money give you? Not greed. Money gives you self-reliance. It makes you buy things what you want. It helps you uh, give to whomever you want. It makes you help your grandparents in need. It helps you help your sisters and brothers to be educated. You have the money. Money is power to help. Money is power to spend. But money is also power to help. Money is power. And the woman, man always has it. Woman does not always have it. She has it erratically. She has it and she doesn't have it. And if she has it, sometimes it's a joint account. And requires approval of the man in law. So she doesn't keep her own independence as well. So the first thing is, as you grow up, I request you, make sure you have financial security, which means you should be qualified to earn. So the first thing I told you about the villages, emerge as community leaders. That's what I meant when I asked you to go back to the villages, is make you train yourself to be the community leaders of the areas you belong to. Second thing I'm telling you is, make sure that you become self-reliant and earn your own money, spend it your own way, help what you want, contribute to the house the way you want, so that you are self-reliant. You understand that? Have you understood? Yeah. Or it's not making any much sense? Is it making any sense? Yes, or no? Yes, no? Yes, no, you don't communicate. <laughs> or you want me to speak in Tamil? <coughs> I don't know Tamil. <laughs> they understand. But they understand. The second thing is, you are getting degree qualified to earn. And it need not be a job, you can start your own small enterprise. There's mudra schemes today, banks will loan, others will lend you. You can also start your own as a group, as a group, start up as a small groups. And start your own companies, set your enterprises. That the college must be teaching you. How can you become entrepreneurs? The first is money. Second thing is, the big difference between men and women. Because this is a women's celebration, therefore I'm trying to tell you what will empower you. First thing is money. Second thing which I, I'm trying to tell you is your fitness. Men have more strength. They've got more muscle power. We have small in size, but we have mental power, maybe. But not muscle power. We must stay fit. We don't give time to ourselves. They walk around, they run around, they travel, they have a lot of food, they eat well, and they box around, they play. We don't spend time for ourselves. We don't spend time for ourselves to remain fit. And without working, or doing, playing games, how many of you play games? How many of you play games? Raise your hands. Which games? Which games you play? Which game you play? Table tennis. I want you to run. Run the beach. Go running long, long marathons. Run. And to get tired and fall. And get up again. Play volleyball, basketball. These are games which make you huff and puff. I want you to play huff and puff. <sighs> and puff. <laughs> if you play on that, then you also have muscle. Men also have muscle, you also have muscle. They have money, you also have money. You understand? Yes, There's a third thing which makes you can make you strong. Is mobility. Is travel. Travel. You got a job, travel. You're able to travel, but you can't travel. Now you have parents to look after. You have aging family to look after, see? Because now you've been brought to look after the aging parents. Many times, men marry to find a woman to look after the parents. 
Right or wrong? Yes. You don't marry the husband who will look after your parents. <laughs> Give me one instance. Give me one instance where a woman marries a husband who will look after her parents. Give me one instance. One instance in life, there will be none. Whereas give me 80 out of 100 instances where a, a woman, man marries because he needs somebody to look after his parents, aging parents. That's the way society is. So what happens? You lose out on mobility. You become homebound and while he remains and he transfers and he travels and he learns and he has friends and he has company, you remain where you are. Don't have mobility. So when you, and mobility gives you experience. It gives you networks. It expands your world. So the woman restricts her own self. A, she doesn't do community leadership. When she's in education, you don't do community leadership. Secondly, you don't give time to yourself. You earn money erratically. And third, as I told you, that you are not mobile. So with the result, you are not as fast growing as the men are. You don't give time to yourself also to become physically strong all the time. And then after motherhood, when the motherhood, it changes your body. Changes your body. Unless you work hard, you don't come back to the same body. It, it, it takes its own energy. It changes biologically and it inhibits you. you. You feed your child for the next one or two years, growth in child, till the child starts going to school, you are tied to the child. I've seen many IS, there's an IS officer batch, person working in my office, she has no support in the family. She brings her own child to the school, my meetings. The child is sitting in her lap, an IS officer, the child is sitting in the lap attending my meeting. Like she's doing. <laughs> the, isn't she? She's the new Indian woman. She's the new Indian woman. See what's happened? She's mobile with the baby. She's not leaving it. You come along. Every time she comes to my office, she comes, the boy comes along. And when the child was, she was saying something, he was repeating her. She is the new Indian woman. Where she's not bothered, she's speaking, the child was playing around with her. I took a video of that. I loved it. That's a new Indian woman. She's not shy that my child is... A, I've seen the, the, the IS officer holding the baby, sitting in the class, uh, sitting in the meeting, and shaking the child and saying, quack, quack. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Then she goes out. She brings a nanny along and then say, okay, now, pat the baby the feeds the child. She feeds the child in another room and then she attends the meeting. That's a new Indian woman. So I've told you four things. First, assume every, ch every girl child and boy child, every youth of this country needs to be a youth leader, a youth change maker, girl or a boy. And do it in the, if you are in the village, no way you must run away from here. Adopt your own village. If you are in a village, you are lucky. And build your own home in the same village. Oh, all the time wait, waiting for a multi-story house, etc. Build your own little home in your own village. Tell your parents, this is my home. I'm going to come back here. Yes. You don't need much space in the village to build a home. So if your parents have a land, tell them, this is, I'm constructing it, this is my home. This is my home for retirement. When I retire, I'll come back. You don't have to say, I'm not having a home. You have a home. Go for, come back. Today, village tourism is picking up. People are coming for village tourism. So, you build a home and then you let it out as breakfast and bed and breakfast. And till you join the house, this is your home. Even if it's a two-bedroom house, it's yours. At least it's your home. 
Tell your parents this portion is mine. I'll allow you to use it till I want. So you can say, I have a home. It's in my village. <coughs> so I told you about community leadership when you are at the student level. I told you the, the power of money which you must not give up. You must adjust in such a way that you continue to earn money if you're qualified as you are. You're capable. And looking for a job or creating a job, it's your choice. You can create a job, you can have a job. But till you get a job, you create your job. Do something girls together for money. Then remain mobile, self-reliant. Get a job, go, come back, go, come back. And stay fit, stay fit. Run around, that mobility will also add to fitness. You understand? This much is enough. If I give you more, then you'll forget what I told you just now. <laughs> so I don't want to overdose you. But you must say, I'm not going to be a migrant. No migration. The village remains my village. I go anywhere, I belong to this place. And if I go to another home, this home also is mine. I'm not a migrant. I have two homes, not one. Man may have only one home. Women can have two homes. <laughs> yeah. Because home of your birth and home which you've earned or destiny is given you or you've chosen to have another home. Isn't it? Man has one home where he's born in. Whereas you have one which you were born in by birth, which God gave you. And second, which you created for yourself. You've chosen to have another home. But you're none of you is homeless because you already have a home. Isn't it? You all girls are born in a home. That's your home. So I would suggest if you remember these while you're in college, use your time to learn, to play, to make friends, to create money, to become more fit, add mobility, adventure, work together in villages, transform the villages, stand for the panchayat elections, become a sarpanch or a punch for some time. Okay, do it. When you have time, do it. Or let your mother do it. Or your aunt do it. Or your Encourage people, young women, to become village panchayats. It will change. India will change only then. And while you do this as community leaders, work together, planting trees, cleaning up your pond, working with the women on Mandrega, you can earn money. You know that? You know that? If you build a rural road, you can earn money. There's a lot of good money. You can earn wages in Mandrega. Do you know what Mandrega is? Do you know what Mandrega is? Mandrega is that Mahatma Gandhi rural programs where you build and you earn wages. And you can build a road, you can clean a pond, and for every day you work, you get almost 300 rupees a day. You can begin with that. It's not meant for only old women, it's meant for young, fit women. And it's a lot of wages. And government of India spends crores of rupees on these rural ranges, crores of rupees. So you can join hands, I will join hands in cleaning a pond. Nothing, we need to have dignity of labor. We think that's not our job. It is our job, it is ours. It's my village, it's my pond. It's my area. Please, uh, may I request the education departments to please educate them on government of India schemes which they can use, so that they are aligned with these Government of India schemes. Go to the websites. You all have a smartphone, yes? You can go type Mandrega and you'll see. Type Mudra scheme and you'll see. Type Government of India schemes and you'll see. You can read on your own. It doesn't matter whether the college has a course. You can read on your own. What are the Government of India schemes? So for me, you have women powerhouse here. 
your women powerhouse, which I see from here to there, can't be bigger than this. It's so much. And I'm so happy to see so many girls being educated so well and getting highly qualified. I'm very happy to see that in this part of the region. As I told you, if you called me earlier, I would have done come earlier also, because I love seeing this. While I was sitting there, I told you, you know, I had something else in mind. I'll tell you what I had in mind, quickly. Sitting there, I was imagining myself when maybe I was just nine years old, 10 years old, and 11 years old, where my parents were educating me, sending me to the school, making me play hard at tennis, competing, traveling, making me do all that. Then I wondered that at that time, 11 year old, did I know that today I'll come here and meet these women and talk to you? And so what has happened between the time I was 11 years old and now? So many years have gone. So much has happened in between. Imagine. So I was imagining sitting there that if I were, what was I, when I was 11 years old, did I know that as left-wing governor Puducherry, I would come and address 800 women of Karuro and this college? Did I know? Did, I did not know. But you know what was happening? In between that 11-year-old and now, the, all these years which have gone was a preparation for this. I was preparing for this. Because the discipline, as your chairman said, that discipline, the hard work, everything went on every day. Every day is a duty to be done. A duty with sense of love and responsibility. Did my parents know at that time, when, even when they're no more here, that one day, Kiran, you will go to Kadulur College, Women's College, and go and address 800 of them? Did they know it? Did I know it? I didn't. But I could not have known it. I could have imagined it. But from that 9-year, 11-year-old, now, every day has been a day of work, mobility, leadership, hard work, planning, giving, fitness, preparation, leadership, every day. And so many years. You too will one day remember what I've told you. You too one day, when you grow up, and you will become like Lakshmi sitting here. You too will be sitting like her, because you have done something very unique. And you too will remember when I was 11 year old doing work in the village, doing rural service, or I was in a college, young girl sitting there, and now I'm now 60, 65, 70. Did I know that? No. But you will remember all the years which have in between gone was preparing you for that. If you do. If you do. This is preparation of life. No day comes to be wasted. Each day comes to be invested. Every day is an investment for tomorrow. If it comes, it's a lovely day. If it doesn't come, you've gone invested, finished, go. You've not wasted your life. You've invested your life and gone. No wasted. So you are in, no, in an age where no day is for a wastage. It is for maximum work, maximum giving, doing, giving, learning, happening, enjoying, singing, dancing, playing, all that. This is your age. That's preparation for the kind of life I am in today. You will remember this. And if you do this, if you do what I'm saying, then one day you will say, because I did all that, I did not know what was coming, but this came because of this. You understand that? Have you all understood? Even those girls right behind, I can't see properly. Can you raise your hand? Are you listening? Yes, you can. Wow. 
Good. I'm very happy to be with you. Wish you a very happy Women's Day and a non-migrant day. A non-migrant day where you have two homes, not one home. How many homes? Show me two homes. You have two homes. That's right. Wonderful. Thank you and God bless you.